Hey guys, this is Anuj from Prepped and Polished, and today I'll be showing you three tips on how to get a five on the AP Physics exams. Tip number one, formulas. There are a lot of formulas on the AP Physics exams, and you'll be using these formulas throughout the, the entire exam, the multiple choice and the free responses. And you have to understand that all of these equations and formulas are going to be used to arrive at the right answer. And so it's very important to know all the formulas and specifically what every variable in the formula means and when to apply them. Now here I have an example. So suppose like you get to the magnetism section and you see these do two different formulas, F equals ILB and F equals QVB. Now they're both magnetic forces and it gets confusing because you don't know when to use it. You know the question asks you to calculate the magnetic force, but you don't know when. You don't know which formula to use, you see two of them. What you should be doing is figuring out what each variable means. You see I, current, L for length, B for magnetic field. And when you see the L, it should give you kind of an intuition that there's a length going on here. So I should be looking at some kind of thing with a length. So that should be a current carrying rod. Whereas the second equation has Q, which is a charge, V, velocity, and B, magnetic field strength. In that situation, you have a velocity and then you have a charge. So you know that's magnetic force of a moving charge. Um, so going through all the equations and comparing them and contrasting them and seeing the relationships between them is going to give you a better idea of how to approach the problem. You have to keep in mind that every problem only has a certain variations of the number of equations and formulas that are being used inside them. So by being very comfortable with these formulas, you'll, be, you'll do really well and get a 5 on the AP Physics exam. Tip number two. Now this is a pretty cool trick to use on the multiple choice section. Every now and then you'll get these different multiple choice questions and you might not know which formula to exactly use or you're a little confused on how to manipulate the um, values in the question stem to get the right answer. And a good check and a good way to do this is to focus on the units. For example, this is a very simple example, but suppose you see in the question stem a mass, a mass of a ball, and then you also see the acceleration of the ball. So you see kilograms and meters per second squared. You've got these two different units, and you see that all the answer choices are in newtons. All you have to know is how newtons relate to kilograms and meters per second squared. And by looking at the formula sheet, you see the formula F equals MA. So all you need to do is multiply them. So if you ever doubt which formula to use, look at the units. Some formulas only have certain units. And it's a good way to check that you're using the right equation and that you're going the right way and solving the problem. All right, tip number three, past AP exams. On the College Board website, you'll find a list of all the past AP physics exams. Go through the free response questions and try to get questions done from every one of the topics. And there are a lot, but focus on those that are giving you the most trouble. If it's hydrostatics or mechanics or magnetism, focus on those. Try to get at least a few problems done for each one of those topics. And especially in the, um, an exam like AP Physics where you've learned some of this material in past high school courses, you want to stay away from focusing too much on those. A lot of students focus too much on the Newtonian aspects of the physics exam. The free response questions sometimes test more of the newer concepts like hydrostatics, electricity, magnetism. So don't get bogged down on those older topics. Try to focus more on those new ones. And if you feel like you're really solid with the Newtonian mechanics, move on. You wanna spend your time doing those problems that are giving you the most trouble. So on the test day, you've get, you ha you'll have all the concepts down pat and you'll be very comfortable. Also, look at the sample responses. Sometimes there are con conceptual questions. For example, in the thermodynamics sections, they ask you different conceptual questions and there's not necessarily a calculated answer. In order to get full credit on these questions, you want to be able to answer them in a style that the college board likes. And to know what style that is, you have to start going through the sample responses and seeing what other students have done to get a five, to get fives in the exams. And so there you guys have it. Three simple tips on how to get a five on the AP Physics exams. Tip number one, be very comfortable and familiar with all the different formulas on the exams. Tip number two, constantly check your units and use these units as sort of a way to look at which formula you need to use on a specific problem. Tip number three, go through past AP exams, diagnose your weaknesses, and focus on those problems that are giving you trouble. For more information on how to get a five on the AP physics exams, please visit preptonpolished.com.